Creepypastas have been an important part of internet culture for over a decade. Many creepypastas revolve around exposing the dark side of something most people would consider to be harmless, a subject of this often being video games. Many well-known creepypastas such as Sonic.exe or Ben Drowned revolve around creepy video games. These stories frequently involve the usually innocent scenic games taking on a dark, gruesome, or mysterious tone. Minecraft is far from an exception to this, in fact, having an entire community dedicated to creepypastas relating to it. One cannot talk about Minecraft creepypastas without discussing Herobrine. The original story of Herobrine first appeared on 4chan's video games board. The post claimed that the user saw Herobrine in the game amongst the fog. The character disappeared and soon they found 2x2 two two tunnels in the ground with trees with their leaves cut off and small pyramids of sandstone, items that would eventually be heavily associated with Herobrine in the following years. The player posted the story to the forums, but the thread was deleted twice. They received a private message from a user named Herobrine reading stop. Their profile forward forward when clicked on. The user additionally claimed that while working with users who had a similar experience, they discovered the name Herobrine belonged to a Swedish gamer who was the brother of Notch. The Anon emailed Notch, asking if he had a brother, to which he replied, I did, but he is no longer with us. The post gained little attention, but what would throw Herobrine into the spotlight was a stream by a streamer named Copeland. He staged a hoax in which he pretended a retextured painting was Herobrine, before he shut down the stream. The only footage I could find of the stream was the seconds before and after this event, and the audio seems to be lost, with only low resolution video copies remaining. Copeland started his second stream afterwards, in which he pretended to be panicking and did things very carefully. Later, his friend Patamus would fake another sighting, this time with a freestanding retextured door in a lava field. However, no footage exists of this stream. Patamus can later be heard in another stream talking to his wife, telling her that it was a hoax. Copeland posted a link in the stream's chat, leading to an animation of a black-eyed default player skin and a group of characters, which when all non-alphabetical ones were removed, revealed the wake-up creepypasta. He would claim that Herobrine was real for about a year before admitting that it was fake in an email exchange with a Minecraft wiki editor. Later on, Herobrine would become a community icon. Removed Herobrine appears at the end of every change log, and Notch has debunked Herobrine many times on Twitter. Another prominent creepypasta in the community is Entity 303. The page for it was first created on the Minecraft creepypasta wiki, which yes, is an actual thing, in July of 2014, roughly half a year after the first reported sighting. The story claims that Entity 303 is the alias of a fired Mojang employee who wants revenge on Mojang in the Minecraft community. He is said to not only be an individual, but a team of hackers who all have the number 303 in their name. According to the Creepypasta, 2.5% of Minecraft players are affected by the entity, and its presence is marked by signs reading Help, help in Swedish. Here, Brian was apparently dispatched in order to warn the community of Entity 303. This story being one of the first popular creepypastas that attempted to de-vilify Herobrine. The page states that the events of the first encounter are unknown, but immediately afterwards the encounter is described in detail. The first encounter apparently occurred on December 11th, 2013. The first person to encounter Entity 303 was named Frankie, and the first person to speak about 303 would be known as the Speed 179. During the encounter, a server populated by individuals named Frankie, John, Vincent, and Brady was hacked by Entity 303, known in the game as Player.3. Frankie would eventually be left alone in their Skype call, along with an eerie, uninvited guest. He hears a voice say, Make a Wish, a phrase that would be associated with Entity 303 later on. This story differs from Herobrine's story, in which the players receive real world consequences. The next day, Frankie meets up with Brady at school and learns that the other two had gone missing. He skips school and goes to John's house to learn from his mother that he had killed himself. He then goes to Vincent's house, which is unoccupied. He sneaks in and finds Make-A-Wish written on the mirror in the bathroom. In the email, he warns Speed to shut down his computer if he wants to avoid the same consequences he experienced. In the second encounter, Entity is confined to Minecraft, and no real-world consequences happen to the players involved. In this encounter, the players were using creative mode, and a house started to burn down. The players started to argue amongst themselves and started to investigate, when they witnessed TNT going off by itself somewhere in the distance. The witness plugged the cable into their Xbox and viewed the game's source codes, which showed an entity named 303 performing many actions, enough to overload their computer. The codes eventually spelled out Make a Wish. The world was eventually shut down, but the server stayed up, being controlled by Entity 303. The player went on the forums and discovered other players shared a similar experience. An odd profile began to chat with them, saying to them, Notch will think you are crazy when he sees us. By the way, you're next. The profile 404 when clicked on. They asked where Herobrine was, and got back the reply, I replaced him, he has died, he is no longer with us, nor anyone else. Their profile was signed out, and deleted with the reason, stop. 
The page later states that Speed, his team, and other teams assembled to fight Entity have five weeks to gear up and fight him. The page also states that Entity sent them a message, stating that he, apparently, would be outside of their windows, eating children. Speed's team had discovered an IP address they dubbed the Sulphur of Immunity, which could give protection against Entity. During August of 2014, two more creepypastas appeared that would gain some prominence in the community, Noel and Ranib. The Null creepypasta claims that a player found the Null entity, a humanoid figure with a pitch black skin, watching them, but not acting hostile. The sighting ceased when the player updated the game at one point. It, like the Entity 303 creepypasta, attempts to de-vilify Herobrine. When the new launcher that allowed players to explore obsolete versions of the game was released, they used it to play on an older version. During their playthrough, they discover a cliché tunnel with all of the items associated with Herobrine. At the tunnel's end, they found a sign reading no before they brushed it off as either a prank or an error. The player eventually heard a glitch crying sound before looking around and seeing Herobrine before the game crashed. Just like in the Herobrine creepypasta, the player messaged Mojang about it, to which they responded, We cannot say anything discussing the matter of Herobrine. The player switched to a more recent version of the game, and days later, they created a new world and spawned deep underground. They discover another tunnel, and they hear a voice crying out for help. They find a sign with unreadable Swedish text, as if Swedish didn't use the Latin alphabet. They put the sign's text into Google Translate, and the output read, Help, Noel is here, tell everyone about me. The player went to help, and when they rejoined the world, they were suspended in the air on a block of red rock, face to face with Herobrine. Their screen turned to static, but not before they screenshotted the things Herobrine apparently said. I need help. Do you remember playing during the Golden Age of Minecraft? If so, do you remember the man that you were greeted by every now and then? The one who is as black as night itself? Do not take this monster lightly. I am trapped. You can blame him. I am sure you have heard of stories about me, how I tortured innocent players. Every single one of them is false. I am feared upon being a very evil entity, but I'm not. I'm one of the good guys. That man you've seen before? He is different. He is evil. Please tell everyone that I am trapped. Maybe they have a solution. If you don't help, however, well then it's his game now. The player asked their friend for advice, and he recommended they contact a YouTuber whose experience almost paralleled theirs. This story differs from the other two, in which credit is given for authorship. The credit is given to Along Came Josh. This YouTuber has made many videos on Hero Brian, Noel, and other Minecraft creepypastas, and still seems to upload consistently. Another popular creepypasta, Ranib, is unique in that it was used in order to make a point about Minecraft creepypastas. In the Mute Trolls video about and first sighting of him, there are various subliminal messages that when decoded, read out creepypastas are fake. At the end of the video, it is outright stated that it is fake and that there is some kind of message behind it. Herobrine and Entity 303 have been the basis for many spin-offs and other creepypastas. There are entire channels dedicated or semi-dedicated to either these stories or exposing them as fakes. Some notable spin-offs and other pastas include Frost Girl and The Red Steve. The Minecraft Creepypasta wiki has well over 2,000 pages and is mostly active. Some of these stories are based on actual in-game objects such as Disc 11 and its supposed connection to Disc 13. Disc 11, when its spectrogram is viewed, shows a face resembling Herobrine or Steve, the default character, as well as the signature of the song's composer, C418, reading 12418. Herobrine has had the largest community impact out of all of the creepypastas, and most Minecraft players could recognize him and his story. The other creepypastas are mostly internally recognizable within the Minecraft community. However, Herobrine's reach spreads beyond the community, being more popular than, or shoulder to shoulder, with very well-known creepypastas, such as Slenderman, Ben Drowned, or Sonic.exe. Even Entity 303, mostly considered an invention known mostly only to the Minecraft community, at some points became more popular than two of these iconic creepypastas, according to Google Trends. However, this could be attributable to difference in community size and loss of popularity over time. Many of the stories that appeared during Minecraft's popularity peak were quick to spread around YouTube, as people geared up to prepare for the next catastrophic event that would hit the game, though obviously nothing happened. Even today, new creepypastas appearing, such as the Obstruct Cube Society, spread and caused some panic within the community relatively quickly. In conclusion, this all happened because that 4chan thread didn't die quick enough. And remember kids, every single story and thing said in this video is, without a shadow of a doubt, 100% factual and true.